Tsiki, Itamexistico. It is a warm Thursday afternoon, August 10th, 2017, in the lunar cycle Okonokisto Tsitsitspi, when the Saskatoons ripen. And actually, the Saskatoons were ripe a couple of weeks beforehand this summer, because it's been uh, quite the dry summer. Any case, I'm down here at the artificial rattlesnake hibernacula and rookery compound in Cottonwood Park at the south end of West Lethbridge. The confluence of the St. Mary's and Old Man Rivers are out this way. The original Fort Whoop-Up was out, out this way. There's nothing left of it now but a little bit of foundation. And this was always an important area for Blackfoot peoples down here. Uh, a place for meetings between the tribes, which is why um, Healy and Hamilton chose this confluence as the place to build their whiskey trade fort. <laughs> Any case, it also has a good population of rattlesnakes. And someone uh, over the summer asked me, why am I farming rattlesnakes down here? And <laughs> or, or more pointedly, why, why is the city farming rattlesnakes? And um, I thought, you know, today would be a good day to, to kind of clarify what this compound is, introduce people to this compound uh, so you know what it is if you don't already. And also, um, I wanted to come down here today to check on the status of the neonates or the pregnant rattlesnakes and see whether they had had any neonates. Neonates are newborn rattlesnakes. On Sunday I saw my first wandering garter neonate of the season and uh, several people have sent me photographs through the uh, Rattlesnakes of Lethbridge Facebook Messenger of neonate garter snakes that they've encountered. So it is baby snake time. Um, the We got wandering garter snakes and plains garter snakes and the prairie rattlesnakes who all give live birth. Um, and then we have the bull snakes who lay eggs and the eggs would be hatching around the same time. So should start seeing lots of baby snakes around. Um, it's a little bit early to expect baby rattlesnakes, but um, but since I saw the, the, the garter snake, I thought it's worth checking. And, you know, I just wanted to come down here and introduce this, this compound to everybody. Now, <clears throat> the story behind this place, it, this was built by Reg Ernst. Um, and, you know, he had help uh, from guys like John Nightingale, uh, who still is working on the program. Reg Ernst is the guy who started this rattlesnake mitigation program that I lead now. And without Reg's work, um, we wouldn't have a rattlesnake program in Lethbridge. It's... Uh, it, 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 we really owe him uh, in that respect. And Reg was curious, he wanted to know whether or not you could do something to, if you had to relocate uh, a significant group of rattlesnakes from one place to another far away from their home dens, uh, whether that can be done. Because research to date has shown that if you take a rattlesnake and relocate it to just any old place, um, they, they have such an attachment to their home den that they'll often just go in search of it and they can exhaust themselves and even, and even tire themselves to death uh, searching for their home den or not find a den to winter in and, and uh, not survive the winter. Um, some of my, my own research since in, in relocating snakes has shown that sometimes they will stay at dens um, that, you, that you relocate them to if you relocate them time of the season if you bring them to another established den somewhere else. I'm finding some of the same snakes um, that I've relocated in, in that manner, like from say the south side where I don't know where there is any den, sometimes I'll relocate them to a den on the west side and I, and I continue to find them around that den on the west side afterward. In some occasions, I'm not saying all, but in any case what Reg did was he experimented here uh, when he would pick up some of the snakes from the neighborhoods from Paradise Canyon and such, he'd bring them down here. And uh, his experiment was to lock them into this compound for a year, um, to keep them in here, to put up a tight, tight wire mesh uh, and just keep them locked in this area for a year and get them very familiar with this place. 
he had to, of course, feed them that whole time, um, catching rodents and stuff and feeding them. And then the second year, let them out and see if they returned. And not a lot did return, but some did. Uh, and it's not, not unsimilar to what I'm finding um, with my relocation. Some, some do end up staying at the places where you bring them. And in, in, this, in this case, um, there have been rattlesnakes using this as a den site every winter, uh, at least as long as I've been um, doing this, running this program. The, the summer that Reg was, was training me in this program, we were seeing um, rattlesnakes here, and he was, he was uh, very excited about that because he hadn't seen them using the dens yet. So it may only be the past five or six years they've been using this, um, but it may, may be longer that they've been using it. It's no longer being experimented with. Um, I'm certainly not farming any rattlesnakes down here, and uh, rattlesnakes are not being locked inside or anything like that. But it is a safe compound, and human beings are locked out, right? Except for myself, I happen to have a key. <laughs> so um, if you have, if you come and visit this this site in the, in the coolies here, um, which you know these are this is this is public park, and so you're welcome to come down here. Uh, you can't go into the compound itself because um, there are restrictions to people messing around with rattlesnake dens and hibernaculas under under the Wildlife Act of Alberta. Um, if you do come out here, you got to be respectful of that act and maintain your distance and don't disturb the snakes, all right? Um, I do have problems out here still with people coming out and trying to chuck rocks at basking rattlesnakes over the over the fence kind of a thing. You know, it, like the <laughs> the re-education uh, of the monkeys never it never ends. But uh, it still happens, right? Um, last year, I had a predator come in. I think it was probably a weasel or a very skinny, uh, uh, a very skinny um, uh, badger. Might have crawled through the crack in the, in the gate. Um, but somebody went in there and raised havoc right around the time that the snakes were going to be having their babies. Ate at least one adult, um, one of the female adult snakes. And there were no neonates here last summer. Um, I think they were just all eaten off by this uh, predator. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about why I think that, well, you know, what I think happens in that regard. But if you come visit this place, uh, one of the things that you can do, if you're visiting during the summer and you want to see a snake, come along the side here like this. <clears throat> and um, be, be very careful because... Uh, this this um, chain link fence does not keep snakes from coming in and out of here, right? So the snake, you know, you have just as much a chance encountering a snake outside the fence as inside. Um, so you have to, you have to be careful. And in the park in general, you should be advised to be be snake aware at all times because there is a good population here. So one of the places where it's easy to see the, the snakes from is just about here. You can see there's a there's a stone in there, flat concrete stone. That's an area where you often see rattlesnakes basking at. Um, if you go down here further, uh, in the skunk brush here, and on that skunk brush on either side of the, the kind of the trail that moves through here, uh, a lot of times on the hot days, the uh, the females will be hanging out in that skunk brush and um, and just keeping themselves cool with the shade, right? Um, you know, if, if, if you're here and you see a snake and you're disturbing the snake, um, you know, you should, you should kind of back away from it and leave it, have, have it space. Uh, you're really not supposed to be messing around at den sites and hibernacula sites. But I know a lot of people are curious. Um, I know a lot of people come here anyway. And so I just want to share um, what I think should be the protocol if you're visiting here, because I know this place gets visitors. Um, let's go inside, and I'll show you around the inside of the compound. Um, there are snakes here today. I already kind of peeked in to, to check it out, and while I was considering whether I wanted to even make this video or not, because um, it is, like I know, I could receive some criticism that I'm putting snakes at risk, but uh, I really don't think so. I like to think that, you know, 
there's a lot of interested people who are responsible um, and I'd rather have people stopping by here at the University of Lethbridge <laughs> to, uh, to get a photograph of a rattlesnake rather than searching around trying to find the natural den sites elsewhere. Um, so, <laughs> don't know if I'm the only one with the key. There might be somebody at the city that has a key, I don't know. But um, as far as I know, I'm the only one. All right, so this is the compound and it has several features. Um, the main feature is up in here, it's buried under the ground. There's a uh, artificial hibernacula um, that the snakes could use to winter in, the ones that Reg was experimenting with. And that there's still snakes uh, that were probably relocated by Reg here at one point or another who were using this site um, as their hibernacula. It's really difficult for you to visit and see snakes at this hibernacula. Uh, because there's a lot of a um, lot of different vegetation here kind of shielding the area where the snakes hang out from view most of them will kind of be in this area you see that black pipe coming out there that's an entrance into the uh, den itself and you can see it's you know very covered by vegetation so your chances of seeing a snake from the side or even from an angle here pretty low at the den itself um, there's a couple of other entrances here there's one here one here you can see a large snake shed here coming out of this one um, again though like during the summertime when you might visit this this area is going to be it's going to have a lot of vegetation you might not be able to see a snake but the, the area where you will be able to see a snake most likely is at the rookery spot where I where I was kind of showing you and um, there are a couple of females in there right now um, no neonates that I can tell as yet uh, typically if the neonates are born I will observe them um, basking outside of the uh, the rookery right I'll see them basking outside um, let me uh, shut off the camera here and restart it turned upside down so I can give you a little peek in there But yeah, there's a couple of females in there, and that means there's going to be babies born there this year. Now, why don't the females just give birth right in the den, rather than needing a rookery site? Um, this rookery is, is close, and most of them are close. They can be up to 100 meters away from a den, but, um, but they prefer to have them very close. And the reason is that there are a lot of predators to the neonates. Um, even magpies will, will eat the neonates and uh, the neonates, newborn snakes have a smell to them and it's my um, hypothesis that the reason that they, they have the, the rookery away from the den is because of that smell and they don't want to bring predators right to the den. So what will happen is they'll give birth here at the rookery and then the, the mother snake will stay with her young for maybe a week and then she will make her way to the den. Uh, the young will continue to stay at the rookery site for several days after the mother leaves them and then they will follow her to the to the den. Uh, it's believed that they follow maybe a pheromone trail that she leaves. Right? They'll follow her to the den. But as they're doing this um, it's very dangerous, 
right? As I said, there's lots of different predators. Last last summer, some predator, uh, most likely of the weasel family, most likely like a long tail or short tail weasel itself, um, came in here and, and wreaked some havoc. I found a piece of a of an adult snake, uh, like her tail end that had been left um, half eaten, and uh, no neonates um, that should have been here. I think they were all just all just uh, picked off by the predator. However, you know these snakes that are here this year were the ones that weren't pregnant last year. The, ra the female rattlesnakes don't give birth every year, um, so <clears throat> there's going to be babies here this year. They're not there yet, uh, even though I saw my first um, garter snake neonate on on Sunday. Uh, the rattlers just aren't quite there yet, but we'll check back in when they are here, so you can have a look at what a neonate rattlesnake looks like. Yeah, in any case, they'll follow the mother up here maybe a couple of weeks after they're born to the den site. Um, and by then, they, they will not have uh, such a strong scent that will drink, bring predators to the den. That's my, that's my hypothesis about what's happening. I'm not 100% on that, but <clears throat> the snakes always give birth away from the den at a separate rookery. And so, um, you know, just given, given the... The evidence that I have that's what makes sense to me and I can I pick up that smell myself I can be walking around out here and and I could catch a whiff of baby snake and I'll know that baby snakes are around so um, that's what I think is happening and yeah uh, no neonates today but uh, we'll check back when there are some and if you had any questions about what this compound is now you know what it is um, <coughs> Now you know what where to go if you know or what I believe the protocol should be if you happen to come by this place and if you interfere with the snakes at all um, it is a criminal offense here in Alberta so uh, don't interfere with them give them their space and but I think you know this this particular site and um, the University of Lethbridge the sixth floor patio den uh, those are two really good sites for people who are respectful and would like to see a rattlesnake. Um, both sites will soon have snakes returning to them as, um, as we progress toward winter.